What if I told you there is a way to download higher frame rates? That's a great pitch, right? My GTX 1080 Ti is nearly six years old. He was a good boy, and he served me well over the years. Not a year goes by where I'm not thankful for the work this old dog put into rendering my shiny little pixels. I typically aim at 1440p, and even if I'm not hitting 144 FPS, I at least appreciate a frame rate that is around 72 FPS. I want it all, but with the GTX 1080 Ti, I can't have it all anymore. Games like Halo Infinite that I play for enjoyment, but also for the channel, can't be experienced in their true glory without going to, say, medium settings, 900p for a stable 72 FPS in the campaign. And I dare not open newer games lest I get subjected to stuttering, frame rate drops, and more. I know I need an upgrade, but until funds permit it, I need to find alternatives. And an alternative is what I found. This introduces us to an app called Lossless Scaling. You know about AI image generation? You've seen the wholesome images of best friends Joe Biden and Donald Trump retired and living their best life by the beach. Or Will Smith eating pounds and pounds of spaghetti on his own. The animal. It's the same logic, only the AI image generation lets the tool inject AI-generated frames between real game frames. So essentially, you're faking a higher frame rate. Some games, it works better than others, but the app also includes AI image upscaling with technology from NVIDIA or AMD to choose from. There's also image upscaling techniques for pixelated games, so it doesn't just benefit the 3D ones. There are just a lot of customization options for how an image is upscaled or how many fake frames you'd like to generate and what their quality should be. Now I know what some of you are gonna say. You dumb dummy, just lower the settings. And unfortunately, I'm also a stubborn man. Remember, I want it all. I want ultra settings, I want a crisp image, and high frame rates without buying new technology. Because, you know, it's outside of my price range right now. And until that utopian dream of an upgraded PC is within my grasp, this app will have to do. So, let's check out lossless scaling. And since I don't have the means to record higher than 60 FPS at the moment, and lossless scaling actually blocks screen recordings for some reason, we're gonna have to do this using the iPhone slow-mo feature. Ah, recording a monitor or a TV. Reminds me of the old days of YouTube. Halo Infinite is a game that doesn't run too well in its campaign. Don't get me wrong, it's got more AI than your typical Far Cry game, making more intelligent decisions than, well, I guess your typical Far Cry game. All moving about these big environments with lots of explosions going off and dynamic physics objects being thrown around. It just doesn't run that well, especially AA Gun Island, as I like to call it. This is one of the open world environments that is hit the hardest by performance drops on my PC. To get things started, we're gonna put Infinite down to something like 900p or lower, and then keep the settings for the game on a mixture of ultra and high settings. Thankfully, AMD's FSR Image Upscaler does a really good job of bumping up the quality of the image. You can tell it's not actually native 1440p, but it's sharp looking, and Halo Infinite's art direction really does help the upscaler out. As for our FPS lock, we set that to 48 frames per second. What? 48 frames per second? Why that specific number, I hear you asking? Well, my monitor has a refresh rate of 144 hertz. So in order for a smooth looking frame rate lock, I wanna make sure the game is running at a frame rate that evenly divides from 144. So things like 72, 48, or 36. When I capped the game to 48 FPS, it pretty much stays there and the frames were smoothly displayed on the 144 Hertz monitor. Perfect. Now it was up to lossless scaling to generate 48 extra frames every second and fit them in between the real frames. With it all ready to go, I gave the game a test drive and for the first time in my life, I was running around AA Gun Island at high and ultra settings with crisp image quality and a smooth feeling, 96 FPS. It was glorious. The downside to this tech is that it does introduce a very slight bit of input delay. But you know what? The human brain is a beautiful thing, and it can adapt to new situations very easily. I honestly couldn't feel any input lag after a bit, and playing with a keyboard and mouse or controller felt great. It's somewhat easy to spot the fake frames in motion. It usually happens when switching guns. For a single frame, you'll see this weird blob rise from the bottom of the screen before taking the form of the gun I'm switching to. But when the action gets going, it honestly just kind of ends up looking more like a weird sort of motion blur. I bet this game would have looked brilliant with some per object motion blur. What would happen if we settled for lower frames then? 
I tried setting it to 36 FPS just to show you what I was talking about earlier, and instantly those fake frames became obvious, and lossless scaling just doesn't have enough data to make convincing fake frames, so the image gets all distorted when action heats up. But I want to see how low I can go, how bad I can make it look. Let's go to 24 FPS. It almost looks like using optical flow on slow motion videos in Premiere Pro. It's this strange, liquidy look where frames will sort of melt into each other. Whipping the camera about turned the world of Halo Infinite into a watery dreamscape. In some animations that happened just too fast for 24 FPS, didn't have enough frame data for Lossless to do anything with it, so it would just smooth over them. Let's see if we can kill a hunter like this. Dying Light 2 is a game that really hammered my PC back when it released. It does have a form of image upscaling with FSR, but at most, I could only get a bit of a performance boost at the cost of a lot of visual detail, and it never ended up actually looking that great. Well now, I can kill two birds with one stone, get more FPS out of the game, and boost up that image quality with a more personalized FSR implementation via lossless scaling. For games like Dying Light 2, Motion Blur can greatly enhance the presentation of the game, giving things a more visceral and, dare I say, cinematic look. But when using lossless scaling, it has an extra benefit. It sort of helps the AI-generated frames actually blend in better. I found Dying Light 2 looked really, really good with lossless scaling enabled. With the game locked at 48 FPS and rendering at something like 1080p, it was a sharp, smooth, and great feeling game. I mean, for Dying Light 2, that is. I personally don't like it as much as the original game. Don't get me wrong, it's not like it's a bad game or anything, it's just not really the sequel I was hoping for for Dying Light. The open world just doesn't feel as real or genuine as a place like Haran from the first game, and the gameplay and physics are a lot more arcadey and kind of fake feeling. Almost like you're playing a first-person superhero game rather than just being a normal guy trying to survive in a zombie-infested city. Maybe I'll see if I can beat the game with lossless scaling assisting. I want to see if I can get it to click with me, because Dying Light 2 is a game I really, really want to love like I ended up loving the first game. Maybe this time it'll hit. Want to know something cool about lossless scaling? It doesn't just work with games. It can work with game streaming services. Xbox's xCloud service comes packaged with the Game Pass Ultimate tier, which I'm subscribed to. Many of the games available for streaming come with 60 FPS options, and I happen to have a laptop that has a 120Hz display, and I wanted to see how lossless scaling would actually work on that. But what game should I try? If only there was a game stuck on the Xbox One till the end of time with no way to boost the visuals or frame rate above 60 FPS. What's that? Do you hear something? Oh my god! It's Luke Cage! xCloud is a fairly decent way to play games, though it is one of the fuzzier game streaming alternatives, especially compared to GeForce Now, which is just so good looking. I was sort of taken aback by how smooth Halo 5 looked at 120 FPS. The FSR worked overtime to get the visuals of the xCloud stream looking clear, and despite Halo 5 being a game with a lot of visual compromises, like character animations being lower than 60 FPS, the frame rate is a locked 60 FPS, which meant lossless scaling had a perfect, smooth frame rate to get enough visual information from to add those new fake frames. And you know, they looked so convincing that I often struggled to actually notice them during gameplay. Let's slow down the footage. You can see that it's usually super fast moving objects or details that have those noticeable AI artifacts on them. But you know, at full speed, kind of like Halo Infinite, it just sort of ends up looking like a motion blur setting of some kind is enabled, which also makes me wish Halo 5 had an actual motion blur setting. It also helps that Halo 5 has some of the fastest controller response times of any shooter on the Xbox, and that did a lot of heavy lifting to help with the inherent input lag of playing a game over a streaming service and then hit with lossless scaling. It's not unplayable by any means, in fact if I were to keep practicing this way, I could probably get quite good at Halo 5 over xCloud with 120 FPS. I also noticed lossless scaling was doing its best to sort of add fake motion to enemy characters, almost like it was trying to clean up the downgraded animations. It was weird seeing Halo 5 this smooth, both the frame rate and the quality of enemy animations. What about even older games? 
Well, it's not just the Xbox One. xCloud lets users play Xbox 360 games, and even older. Some even had frame rate boosts added to them. I booted up Gears of War 2, aka the best Gears of War game, and found that it looked just flawless. Flawless at 120 FPS. Unlike Halo 5, Gears of War 2 does have motion blur, which helped a ton with making the AI-generated frames look organic and seamless. Hey, look at that! Ty survived the explosion. I love that guy. I was worried he was gonna die or something in this game. I seriously can't stress enough just how good Gears 2 looked at such high frame rates, though the input lag this time around was something that I did struggle with quite a bit. I probably could have tried to fix this a little bit with an ethernet cable plugged into the laptop, but I was just lazy. Lossless Scaling is such an amazing app. It's only seven bucks or so on Steam, and despite not being sponsored by it, I was so impressed by its capabilities that it felt almost like a crime to not discuss it in a video, because it was a huge lifesaver with my poor aging PC setup. I'll get around to upgrading my PC someday, but thanks to Lossless Scaling, that day may not need to be so soon. If you found this video interesting, please feel free to share it around. What are your thoughts on AI image upscaling or frame generation? 